Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. I uh, just wanted to show you something we're working on as far as accessibility. Um, so we've got a pretty big commitment to accessibility and implementing some things at times that are a little crazy uh, relative to other systems. But just close this out as I refresh the page. Uh, implementing W3 spec on low vision. So if you have not seen the W3C working document on low vision, it talks about needs for color contrast, um, contrast sensitivity, light sensitivity, field of vision. Uh, field of vision was one that I thought was very interesting as far as just even overlaying these images. And I, I don't want to overlay images. We got to do this with CSS. Um, and so we'll show that, right? So I've also gone a long way towards uh, doing uh, contrast ratios to ensure we're hitting uh, WCAG um, 2.0 AAA, I believe, uh, coverage uh, using the wave wave checker. Don't know that everything is that way, so don't quote me on that, but it's it's getting very close. Uh, but so let's hit our little accessibility icon. You can see interface-wise, we've got the ability to resize. We can go into high contrast mode. Um, we can invert colors. We can disable interface animations, and we can dynamically optimize font for dyslexia. So. These are five aspects right there of that spec that we were already hitting. Um, simulations, I'd previously had this dyslexia simulator, which is just kind of trippy. Um, and it's from job, some JavaScript that I found. Uh, but today, show you uh, field loss. And so field loss, we can do center, center field loss as well as peripheral field loss. And uh, this is a CSS filter applied in real time. So you can simulate both of these conditions in you know as good as we can simulate them, right? Obviously, it's um, not the same as unfortunately having that condition, but um, you can see we've kind of taken the interface, and if you were to you know, glance at this, right, it's kind of the idea of tunnel vision. You can see that with my tunnel vision, it becomes very hard to see these uh, left-hand navigational items. Um, now I can always look over at them. And so it's more important from this perspective that there is something visible here, right? There's something visually jarring to a user that would be focusing, you know, tunnel vision style in this middle of the screen, uh, that there are more options. And so this can help you kind of bring that to the forefront. Um, you know, your need for this type of accessibility. Central loss is kind of, it's kind of hard, um, honestly, to say, we're gonna make our content account for this in all cases. You see, we we put this big blur on the screen um, and we keep it with you, right? It's right in the middle. So if I actually had this condition, um, it's extremely hard to read what's in the middle of the screen. Again, this is, you know, part of accessibility in my mind is about creating empathy. So uh, while you usually shouldn't, you know, deform your content with with these types of simulations. It's important to see, well, you know, maybe I have this big image gallery. Maybe this image gallery isn't an image gallery. Maybe it's a map or something, and maybe it takes up the whole width of the screen. Um, this is actually kind of a case against those type of uh, full width interfaces where all the information is centralized in one area. Um, and so just wanted to show we have actually implemented this as well as the um, the simulations. The simulations just got in. Um, pretty awesome uh, what you can do with CSS now. I mean, so, you know, you can see this is the highest layer above everything, but yet I'm able to still click everything. So, you know, I could say, okay, well, there's this really important thing in the middle of this image. It is now impossible for me to see it um, unless I'm aware that, oh, I'm in a context where I've popped up and I, you know, kind of uh, tilt my head around to kind of look at it. Um, this could also create, you know, a use case with something like parallax, where using parallax and hooking things up to um, the computer's accelerometer uh, in the browser, we should be able to. I'll meet her. We should be able to let the user kind of look around uh, the picture that's in place. If I could spell accelerometer, I can't spell accelerometer. There we go. Support for accelerometers. Um, about how to access gyroscope data through JavaScript. So if we were able to do that, um, we could have devices that when tilted, you could see more of an image, um, or we could also do um, using a webcam. We've, uh, we have some other issues that look at this type of an approach, have the webcam see your, uh, do some eye tracking 
and try to reposition um, reposition media accordingly. Uh, we could reach a point with the simulations where we go beyond simulation and we say, okay, well, this isn't a simulation. This is a, a tool. And what's the tool that we're going to use? Well, it's for combating you know, central field loss or peripheral field loss. Um, and we could actually have the user dynamically scale the interface down outside the scope of their near field loss. Now, if I were to scale this, right, there's another way to, to combat this, right? But if I zoom way in, you see I'm pretty much, I'm starting to lose kind of kind of a lot of useful information. Uh, at this point, I don't see that the network icon is here, for example. So again, it's gonna help with planning. It's mostly to you know raise awareness and increase empathy. So hope this was neat. Uh, you can get it if you use Drupal and not Elms Learning Network, you can get it in the A11Y module.